Tamil Nadu. Uh, he has worked uh, as the uh, retired as the executive director for Center for Water Resources Development and Management in Kerala. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Ramachandra sir and uh, James sir. Uh, just to uh, get Professor Moe's an introduction about the uh, happening so far. Uh, we have started at nine o'clock and had a couple of sessions already. The, the, uh, the cohort of uh, trainers is uh, 24. We have 24 participants here across uh, 10 states of India. And also we have uh, uh, a couple of resource persons joined uh, across uh, uh, various fields of uh, uh, river health management and biodiversity, climate change, etc. So uh, uh, welcome to all the resource persons, panelists and participants to the session. I'm uh, handing over the session to uh, Dr. Anil Kumar. Thank you, uh, Prajish. Uh, we are uh, entering into a kind of not very formal uh, kind of uh, session. It could be an informal uh, session. Uh, so we have structured this uh, program into uh, different levels, the classroom lectures, field uh, uh, trips, plus this kind of uh, discussion. So let me uh, thank uh, uh, the panelists uh, see, from uh, overseas, thousands of miles away, Dr. Morse has uh, joined uh, with us. And uh, let me uh, also tell a few words about him before we enter the discussion. The kind of uh, support he's extending to this program, and the kind of interest uh, he has got with the Indian river and the North Indian people. So on behalf of all of them, uh, sir, uh, we thank you. Uh, and Dr. James, uh, you know him, and uh, uh, he, he is with us the last uh, evening, and he will be giving you a lecture tomorrow morning. So the topic which we are going to discuss is the science dimension and the strategic dimension. Because if you look at India, we do science but in the morning now, uh, that issue had come. But the academic world and the administrative world and the community aspects, there is a disconnect. So how do we bring, first of all, the kind of uh, the science, scientific targets? Why the IPCC, which we are believing IPCC, what IPCC say, because IPCC brings science, good science from all over the world. But in case of the eco-restoration or ecosystem management, whether it is a river ecosystem or any ecosystem, we don't have the scientific data on the table. For example, he said uh, he is an insect uh, biodiversity expert. He said uh, many other Asian countries have comprehensive atlas for the insect diversity. For example, in case of plant diversity, I am yet to come across uh, an atlas for the riparian plant diversity of India. Do we have such kind of uh, an atlas where the entire uh, India's riparian diversity has been published and available in the form of a book? I don't know. To my knowledge, it is not there. So the science aspect, then the strategic intervention. For example, you know, the prioritization. Morning, there was a suggestion. So which area of uh, India needs urgent action or, you know, the kind of uh, strategic action or which kind of uh, time is the best time to act in case of, for example, whether should we wait uh, until the landslides happen or until the severe drought happen, how uh, preventive we are. So these kind of uh, uh, issues with reference to the strategic actions with reference to the scientific uh, kind of uh, rigorous science, I would say, in knowing the 
river ecosystem uh, health so this is what uh, which we are trying to discuss we want to uh, listen to you first uh, dr mos your uh, video we will be screening in between and they have not seen because you know, they they came this morning and uh, so we we are straight away entered into different session but uh, we will be screening your uh, uh, video in course during these uh, days you can uh, touch upon what you have shared uh, with us and then we will uh, move to uh, dr ramachandra then we will come to dr james so we will start with these uh, two questions what are the scientific uh, targets uh, needed for river health management with reference to the indian context and also what are the strategic actions which policy makers and you know the kind of administrative setup they have to take up thank you thank you dr anil kumar i'm very pleased to be with you today i i wish i could be there in person so that i could meet each of you and talk with you about your uh, your work and your interests and uh, learn your names but uh, of course circumstances do not allow this so i i will attempt to talk about um the next steps in the science of, uh, of systematics in this case in taxonomy and systematics but the session that you will watch uh, of the video that i have provided will explain why macroinvertebrates and especially insects may be especially important for helping you to monitor the water pollution situation in the waterways of india uh, as they are used in many countries of the world even now in north america in europe uh, australia japan many countries of the world uh, and other countries are developing systems china is coming along with a system for example but today i, I want to focus on uh, where we need to go uh, in india for uh, developing the science to the level that is needed for monitoring water pollution using these macroinvertebrates the science of biological taxonomy or biological systematics really profound, provide, provides the foundational language of biology uh, both historically since the beginning of humankind uh, all the way uh, to the, uh, the modern times uh, conceptually and historically taxonomy allows all societies of the world and through all time to share biological knowledge in other words the names of living organisms are the labels with which biological information is published and databased and these names are the keywords by which all that information is recovered from the publications and databases for our modern use and therefore a reliable assignment of the names of organisms is critical to the success in all areas of biological science the science of taxonomy and systematics uh, in india uh, is doing well in some areas for example the recognition of unknown species is going very well in in india there are still many species to be discovered but uh, the discovery is going quite well uh, some work is being done in historical relationships in the phylogenetic studies and that is also uh, good and will be useful uh, in time with the uh, study of uh, the pollution situation in the waterways of india but the way that is uh most needed at least with regard to macroinvertebrates is to describe the forms that live in the water with insects most species are described on the basis of the terrestrial adults and we know how to recognize those terrestrial adults but because insects especially holo metabolous insects and the mayflies and stoneflies for example and dragonflies 
the larvae that live in the water look so very different from the terrestrial adults, it is necessary to associate the identifiable adult with the yet unidentifiable larva that lives in the water. There are several ways to do this, but the most productive way now is to associate with DNA. The DNA of the adult is the same DNA as is found in the larva. Once that association has been made, then it is possible to describe and to distinguish the species of the freshwater forms of the insects and other uh, organisms. According to my understanding, this is, this is what is needed in terms of the science. But how can we get to that point? There, it, there are some initial steps that are needed before we can get to that point. Based on my experience in other Asian countries, and, and I, now I have taught in 10 different countries there in Asia, including India. Um, according to my experience, here are the steps that I think are needed as a foundation for a scientifically rigorous system of monitoring pollution in the streams and other waterways of India using macroinvertebrate sentinels. You need a reference book. Dr. Anil Kumar mentioned the need for a list of the fauna and the flora, and this is very true. We need a reference book of the currently known fauna and flora of India. And we need a reference book that people who are not practicing scientists, but who are the uh, technical staff who will monitor pollution, uh, standards how they can uh, conduct their work with macroinvertebrates. I have provided some lectures, uh, I have provided some uh, references uh, with this, these remarks, and I will send these remarks uh, to uh, Dr. Anil Kumar uh, so that he may share these with you. Uh, but there are some references to other books, other reference books like the ones that I am wanting to describe to you now. Yes, we must prepare a list of the freshwater families and genera and species that are known in India. And this will probably require a collaboration of specialists. No one person in India or anywhere else in the world knows all of the species of all the biota of India. So it will require a collaboration of specialists, many of whom, of course, are working at the Zoological Survey of India. We need to prepare lists for at least the freshwater mollusks, the freshwater annelids, and the freshwater decapods, the freshwater amphipods, the freshwater isopods, and the freshwater hexapods, including the insect orders Ephemeroptera, Odonata, Plecoptera, Hemiptera, Megaloptera, Trichoptera, Lepidoptera, Coleoptera, and Diptera. This is a lot of work. It will require collaboration. So we prepare these lists and then we write and publish a book that includes sections and chapters on the general freshwater ecology, on habitat assessment methods, on field sampling methods, on methods for data analysis, and then how to identify those freshwater animals and plants that we know how to identify them to at least the family level and uh, to the genus if possible. Ultimately, you will want to go to be able to identify the species, but at least for now, we should learn how to identify the freshwater forms of the families and the genera of at least these 14 macroinvertebrate groups that I have listed. Once we have prepared this reference, we need to organize an intensive 
workshop. And I'm not talking two or three days. This is be, this would be a workshop of two weeks to three weeks or four weeks so that young university teachers will be able to uh, come from various universities in India to learn this the reference book and to learn how to uh, use these methods and to learn how to identify these uh, uh, plants and animals, these animals especially, the macroinvertebrates. Then these teachers will return to their universities and begin teaching courses about this. This has been done in other countries where I have worked and it can certainly happen in India. Begin teaching courses about water pollution and the methods for monitoring, how to identify these macroinvertebrates and how to use them for monitoring water pollution. We should also hold special workshops, such as the one that you are doing right now, to advise other uh, administrators, uh, politicians who are establishing the laws for India and who are making the decisions about how training will be accomplished in India and how uh, these uh, standards will be established for India. We would then need to encourage and support freshwater ecology scientists to discover and publish traits of India's freshwater macroinvertebrates, including their tolerance values. This is not possible until it is possible to identify them. And so that is why the reference book is fundamental. The ecologists cannot determine the uh, the traits of these organisms, nor the tolerance values for pollution until they learn how to identify them. They, we need to learn what species have been previously unknown in India, and we need to learn the freshwater forms of those species. After about 10 years, I'm guessing, we can publish a revised version of this reference book because the reference book itself will have enabled scientists to discover what is known and what is not known. And they will be able to do the research on the taxonomy and systematics of these groups. And the new knowledge can be incorporated into the second revision. So, this reference resource will provide a current state of knowledge about the freshwater macroinvertebrates of India, reveal the knowledge gaps that need to be filled, and include the taxonomic gaps. The impact of such a program will be to enable the ecologists to discover the levels of pollution that different species can tolerate, and to discover the essential biological traits of species that will then help to identify the causes of pollution in different lakes and streams in India. So for the ambitious young people who are listening to me today, the work I am recommending will provide you an exciting career that will be of exceptional benefit for the future health and economic prosperity of India. And for the insightful administrators there in your group, you will recognize the importance of supporting the work of these ambitious young people and will do your best to equip and enable them to pursue successful careers in this foundational aspect of environmental health. I look forward to working with you. I will be happy to help in any way that I can to prepare this fundamental foundational text reference and I cooperate with you to help make this happen in your country as I have done in India and I mean in, in China and as I am doing now also in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia. But I will be delighted to help prepare such a reference for India uh, with, with your help. Uh, that's what I had to share this morning, and I look forward to your questions. 
and uh, our discussion. So thank you so much, uh, sir. Uh, uh, you, you will be with us for uh, some more time and we will have... Uh, so when we try to assess the uh, river health, we don't have necessary tools. That is what he is telling. So the first tool which we need is a detailed reference book. And he was referring about his uh, subject area, the macro invertebrates. So definitely we should uh, listen the other uh, two participants. What is the kind of status uh, with reference to this uh, reference book? And once the reference book is ready, we have to take that reference book uh, as a tool to train people like you. Now you are here, but he is asking us to train for a longer period of time, not just three days, five days. You know, it's a kind of... Uh, then those preferably university teachers, that is what he is telling us. So that sort of a, a strategic approach, we need to bring science for the Indian uh, scenario. Because the Indian scenario, he, because he is experienced with other countries. So we are just trying to understand him. So what is your opinion, uh, sir? Uh, since you do the science, uh, unlike see, people like me, you're a practicing scientist. What is your opinion? Well, before I take up that discussion, first let us try to understand why we need this. You know, need for uh, river health monitoring, essentially in a country like ours. Today, the government has come up with a very innovative and no novel program of supplying water to every house through gel null program. If the there has to be adequate water and uh, good quality water, then one has to do the monitoring of the aquatic ecosystem. That is where we have the need for such a, a monitoring mechanism. Then uh, if you look at, we are at the right time now, the NEP is introduced in the country, that is national education, new education program. I think we need to uh, the incorporate this component in the monitoring of the, the ecosystem so that, you know, even the school children can take part in this. Now, coming to the kind of the effort that has gone in India, I would say we have done these efforts quite a long time back. I remember uh, from some Madhav Gadgil, way back in 2000 to 2010, uh, through the grant from Pew Foundation, you know, he had a project called Lifescape Project, wherein the various tools were developed. For example, to monitor the, in the aquatic ecosystem, the macro invertebrates, the field guide was developed by Dr. Subramanian and his uh, research supervisor, K.G. Shivaramakrishna. Similarly, the diatoms, you know, the producers of the, the lotic ecosystem, when you look at the lotic ecosystem, since the water is moving, well, we need to look at the quality of the, uh, the water through the, the, the entities which are static. So we felt that diatoms are the best one to do it so that the, they are attached to the plants or the stones, etc., so that you can collect the sample and do that, prepare the slides and do that. And when we try to do that, uh, today we have the manual kind of a thing which was developed under the, the small grant program of the ATRI, the, it's on the diatoms of South Asia, which gives uh, how to collect the sample, how to identify the, the, uh, to the species level. And one of my students even got the doctorate in that. So that way we have made the efforts, though, though it's a fragmented, even on the fish assemblages, there has been a significant effort on the river and ecosystems and also on the lentic ecosystems like the water, the lakes, etc. So I would say that whatever we did in the last two decades, 
probably we need to fine tune that taking advantages in the science and technology and uh, we have to take it forward the when uh, i was surprised with uh, professor johns uh, the comments that we do not have the such a thing probably we may not have for the entire country but certainly we have done the effort for the western guards and western guards when you look at they are taking into account the changes in the climate that is happening in the country the western guards and himalaya are the hot spots of biodiversity we have started the journey way back in 2000 and only that uh, the journey has to be sustained and we need to involve more and more youngsters in the program as you rightly pointed out they it's involving the 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 youth especially the faculty in the universities uh, is a good idea we need to mobilize the resources for that that is the model that uh, professor gadgil also adopted in the 2000 he had a network of science teachers from the various institution in fact today we had a speaker hari haran who was involved in the program i think uh, you were also there anil kumar was also there that is one of the program probably we need to replicate that with a wider network uh, which should uh, span across the all the institution in the country and i would say that if you want any program to be successful we need to catch the youngsters when they are young that is the school so if we do that we will have a sensible people i think the motive of this kind of program is to create a people with the knowledge so that they become effective decision makers and if they can identify the health of the system through the some of the indicator species probably uh, they could become a good uh, managers in the system i'm looking for such a system and we have been working in this direction also a couple of my students also have worked on this fish and diatoms and we have published and it is available online also okay <clears throat> may, may i respond uh no now sir we will listen now dr james and then we will have a discussion probably so the the next uh, unless unless it is very pressing for you well of course uh, i agree that uh, algae are also are very useful and should be used uh, along with fish should be used uh, to help monitor water pollution you have not yet seen my video and you will hear in my video an explanation of the advantages of using macro invertebrates that uh, are are also useful and in some ways even more useful than the algae so i encourage you to uh, notice that in the video but i will stop here and let you proceed with the program yes i agree i was teaching in 2007 there in india i understand <laughs> so some of this background that you were developing yes i was part of the helping to develop it yes good thank you thank you sir uh, so dr james uh, he in fact uh, he held the position of uh, vice chancellor of uh, karunia university so his experience varies from uh, a scientist to an administrator to an educationist uh, he is the right person to answer this sort of you know the science bringing science for the Uh, or what are the gaps in uh, taking science uh, for the river health management thank you you can respond dr james when uh, professor mosh was talking about taxonomy what came to my mind is that one of the first books on taxonomy of the western guards was written by an indian who is familiar with the plant species of uh, india and uh, a dutch man this is 400 years back more than 400 years back so uh, even today when somebody wants to know the indigenous species of the western guards we go back to that book Uh, there was a famous botanist uh, father saldana of uh, st joseph college bangalore he used to tell me that if you want an authentic information about the taxonomy you have to go back to orthos malabaros so uh, it's more than 400 years and uh, the book is still available and it has been translated into malayalam Uh, by i think by the professor of sabu who is participating in this meeting so that's for that uh, my suggestion with regard to professor moses uh, view is that we can have 
a collaboration of universities in India who are dealing with this area, freshwater ecology and freshwater taxonomy, they can work together to achieve the goal. What I mean to say is that as part of their ongoing projects, they can visit the site, collect samples, come back, identify, and then take it forward. And uh, if I understand correctly, uh, I feel that within a year, we have to come out with a book on freshwater taxonomy for the freshwater wetlands of India. And uh, you should understand that we have got, uh, I, I used to wonder, you, you know that I'm a civil engineer, I'm a hydrologist, but I used to wonder the small ponds in Kerala where we used to take bath when I was young, it has got its own biodiversity. Forget about the large freshwater wetlands like Loch Tech or uh, even your Shastam Gota or whatever you are talking about, even the small ponds has got its own biodiversity. This is something to be looked into. And people used to take bath in that, nothing happened to them. Okay? I used to feel that all this green and all of that, uh, this may perhaps affect you, but no, this has been the traditional system of bathing in Kerala that they dip in this small ponds and then come out fresh. So uh, I think it is very interesting. We should have a look at it. Uh, I feel that we should have a look at it. And from my side, I can request, we don't have uh, a pure zoology and botany departments here, but we have a uh, bio, biotechnology, uh, microbiology, biochemistry departments. I will request them, and we have got an ornithologist here with us. We will request them to also collaborate with Professor Moose. And at one particular time, when you want to have a journal to be brought out, our university will sponsor a journal on taxonomy, freshwater taxonomy, maybe the first journal in this part of the country on freshwater taxonomy. We will be the first to sponsor such a journal to be brought out. So uh, that's about uh, my view. Yeah. No, that is very, uh, very good. Um, and um, so what now it is emerging, though uh, the situation is not very uh, blank. We have uh, uh, publications, but we don't have a comprehensive publication that I think uh, all of us uh, agree, particularly with a reference to the uh, macro vertebrates and the uh, other forms of uh, life. So there is a kind of uh, agreement. To how do we uh, come together to produce such kind of a publication? So now the discussion is open. You can ask questions. The, the idea is how do we build a platform to bring such kind of a publication? So with this, I open uh, this for uh, discussion. Any, any, yeah. okay, please. See, when we, I have an additional comment. I don't want to leave out other uh, background students also and other background faculty. When we talk about a river ecosystem, it's a living uh, ecosystem. We need to involve the engineering uh, students and engineering faculty also. That is where monitoring of the river health, the looking at the catchment uh, conditions or the flow conditions, etc. We need to incorporate that and our agenda is the river, uh, the water quality monitoring and the, the management. So if you want to see the sustainability, we need to have all the stakeholders in the, the basket, then only we can see a success in the program. So how do we go ahead? Uh, anybody can uh, respond? We can start from here. What is your... What is your your, your attacks on this? No. <laughs> I'm not a taxonomist, but uh, but an eco. I, I specialized in ecology and ecophysiology, but I'm uh, very much uh, interested in uh, taxonomy. As you have rightly uh, pointed out, 
uh, we have to have a set of uh, reference uh, reference books and and then uh, networking or linkages with the universities and institutions where where uh, taxonomy is specialized and then uh, rightly uh, sir pointed out and and like you know the the the, the monitoring aspect physiochemical parameters isn't it sir uh, the uh, the cash catchment conditions and and watersheds all that so i i think we have to make a a a, a special uh, syllabus like or or a curriculum so that has to be developed and this is actually uh, the need of the hour and uh, and we can think of uh, uh, making a curriculum uh, or or an academic program and then involving all because it it's a multidisciplinary approach and and that way we can uh, move ahead this what i i wish to say this is just a general comment like um, uh, i absolutely um, understand how for such a comprehensive review uh, a reference book to come out we need to uh, get the knowledge that is uh, uh, present in several different departments across india from the zoological survey and etc uh, etc et many places um, but i was thinking to do such a thing there has to be someone who is uh specially assigned for it like somebody who has a funding who has that as their job itself as a, you know for however long it might take to carry out such a thing i guess otherwise any one person who's already associated with something else taking it up may not work is uh, is what i'm kind of thinking may i give a suggestion anil may I give a suggestion um i think we have to move a project proposal to the ministry of environment and forest this msr of can do that if required other ngos working in the area also can collaborate with them send a project proposal for a coordinated project on uh fresh water taxonomy a coordinated project to be funded by the ministry of environment and forest and it can be led by the mssrf the others can be the partners and uh, the major advisory role and involvement can be from professor john and he can also help in drafting the project proposal for mssrf and let me go forward with that of course um, i can also request uh, the wetlands international uh, south asia to be a partner uh, with the mssrf in uh, preparing the project proposal and later perhaps in the implementation stage i think once they implement it they will have to incorporate the academic institutions into it it should be a, a sort of uh, what they call uh, a coordinated project by mssr if uh, anil kumar can take initiative and go forward uh, we will all support such a move Certainly, I agree to cooperate in this way, or what other whatever other ways may be needed. But I can, I will be happy to serve as an advisor and in whatever other way I'm needed to make this happen. Because I also, I I would like to see India be successful in managing their water pollution problems, for as I say, for the health and the economic. uh progress of the country of israel in india it's uh, very important and i i agree to help in any way that i can
thank you thank you thank you both of you and uh, we will we will listen the participants further yeah uh, thank you uh, my suggestion is that uh, if we have to trace micro invertebrate in the riverine system that is uh, that is moving and we have to tra- we have to trace lot of invertebrates so uh, we have to uh, focus on more integrative approach except uh, apart from the morphological and anatomical and anatomical features we we may also incorporate like uh, evolving technique like edna environmental dna uh, techniques which can help us to uh, identify the micro invertebrates whether they are, we can collect the environmental sample and we can make a tracing system for them also so such integrative approach help us to uh, help us to get the exact uh values and number of micro invertebrate in riverine system thank you i i can come at to this if you wish uh you, know, yes. you can you, you can come and on you can come and on it you can come and thank on you it. yes this is this is this is a very good idea it is very important you must understand that in order to assign in order to assign an identity to a dna sequence you first must involve a taxonomist who will be able to provide a name for that voucher specimen from which you got the dna so that is a very important thing that you are mentioning it is very true it is certainly part of our future uh and i i heartily agree and concur but you must understand that the work on the taxonomy has to be first or you will not know to what the dna uh, what the sequence uh, belongs to so that needs to be done first and the second problem that still exists you can you can identify the edna but you cannot quantify the number of organisms with that dna that may have may be in the system you can you can show the presence or absence of a particular dna sequence but you cannot yet know what the what the density of the that organism is in the system so two two things to be concerned about so the point is you know we have to have the taxonomic manual first then only unless there is a correct identity of the species there is no point in uh, doing the dna but dna that part is important but uh, this has to be done along with uh, the taxonomy part maybe you will well listen. as far as the dna barcoding is concerned already there is a coordinated program under uh, in uh, dst what we need to do is integrate our agenda in that so that has to happen and for any of this monitoring program if it has it has to be cost effective if you are thinking of involving the many institution and get the data in the first round see if you want to represent the entire landscape of the country it has to be a cost effective so that's where i fear this barcoding and all the this one whether we would be able to do that if you have a small uh, area talking about that yes i agree with that some of the institution have succeeded but that is uh, this one you know that capability to hand those specimen and all those thing is required that is a special expertise itself so that is where we have to be careful on those aspect when we venture into the this kind of thing okay. any other questions to the panel uh, regarding this sarvamugana thank you sir actually we we do the scientific planning and strategy but implementation is a very very important so uh, work on for the river health management the community is a very very important for implementation part so we prepare any manual or any catalog we prepare in a local local language and also very simplify for the community people so they they only continue our uh, work for monitoring and then manage manage management and then any, any implementation parts very important very good the third thing i have to mention in this regard is uh, incorporation of the traditional knowledge also because uh, any scientific uh, things also there is some uh, with respect to the especially with respect to the freshwater lake ponds etc 
uh, there are so many traditional knowledge available in the uh, in the uh, state and we have to look at uh, this matter also uh, when we think about the rural health program that's it yes sir uh, i just uh, want to ask uh, we are discussing about uh, we were health monitoring and we were discussing only bio indicator yeah uh, like a taxonomy etc uh, i want to know it is no need for monitoring of physical or chemical parameter to identify <laughs> that's a good question but this session we are discussing okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, i i am <laughs> i'm so confused yeah. it is only for the we, we, we will we will discuss because now we are discussing the holistic manner but this particular session we are discussing yeah, yeah. only okay. the biotic uh, okay, okay thank you thank you i i can respond to that though no. if if you wish if, if you wish i can respond yeah, yeah. please yes? please please respond yeah okay yes Uh, <clears throat> we do very much want to know the physical and chemical parameters in which these organisms are living. We can correlate those physical and chemical parameters with particular species once we know how to identify those species. So that is that is the connection. We need to be able to do both because we need to know what are the uh, what is the ability of the different species to survive and to thrive in different physical and chemical conditions so every time we take a sample with a living organism we need also to measure the physical and chemical characteristics that allow that organism to live and to thrive in that in those conditions it's fundamental to the work that we are doing yes i agree yeah well uh, let me tell you the this one you talked about physical chemical uh, son on the lighter side i'll put it we have progressed so much in that today with the it revolution we are in a position to even tell bod every minute earlier we used to take 3 days 5 days this one see that is where physical chemical parameters are misused actually whereas biological thing i would say there is a robustness probably no one can manipulate the thing that is where i would say we need to have a integrated approach then coming to the the funding of the this one i would say since you have taken this uh, the, for the apn i think going for the larger uh, in the with the apn there is a the, the greater success also uh, with this progress in the project here so because i had a similar program and i apn i think from the smaller to the larger you can move forward with the, the whatever the outcome of this meeting you can put it effectively so that apn also will take a call on that okay. the suggestion of uh, preparing the proposal uh, for a donor the potential donor could be the asia pacific network on um, global change research so what we will do we will uh, take the inputs uh, from the experts here as well as the uh, people uh, attending the workshop and as the suggestion came uh, mssr of will be happy to take a lead in preparing such kind of a proposal what we request uh, <coughs> to you is uh, shaping that proposal for the uh, for an international uh, uh, funding either apn or any other uh, sort of a good uh, funding agency i think gi said of german government is also funding projects on biodiversity so we can also approach gi z um, they may be perhaps uh, funding such projects i think mssr of had a small project uh, with funding from gi z you can definitely go to gi z and then seek for some funding it may be possible that's what i think in fact i have another suggestion if you are going to apn or gis it may be a, the worthwhile exercise to develop a prototype document with the expertise what you have already the, the professor john uh, is there he can write a section on aquatic uh, and relevance on that 
like that so that you can have that so and show the effectiveness of that so that scaling up see we are talking about scaling up involving the many institutions and across the country so then we can say that we have done for a small uh, this one and this can be replicated you know in the science we look for uh, replicability okay certainly it is a good suggestion hello my name is balashan nair masha uh, i am retired at masha i am thinking of this this is a very great idea i am thinking of uh, this plan for more than 10 years i have no i am not able to uh, inform the authorities that is a uh, difficulty a very great idea great great idea as far as i am concerned uh, i am concerned uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, 2002 and 3 uh, academic year i uh, i am participating in the preparation of the chemistry 99 standard so uh, first of all uh, my belief in my belief my thinking uh, body is concerned a um, uh, group of people with the different uh, levels uh, different knowledge a uh, group together and thinking uh, make a syllabus and uh, come into uh, give to curriculum and uh, according to the uh, understanding power of the um, uh, people i to give the uh, lp up high school uh, plus 2 is a very very great important yes is so first of all you got the uh, the uh, nowadays uh, the bomba other other rivers are polluted that is a main concern uh, with regards a very great idea thanks very great idea thanks. thank you sir thank you sir yeah prajish so uh, when i was listening there uh, there were two basic things first we have to get collect data of course yes come to you then of course he was trying to say that the long term monitoring that it should be cost effective so i was wondering when we can reach a, 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 a situation where our uh, uh, this kind of diversity get registered in the people's biodiversity register so can we do something like that at the same time with the researchers and with the community how can we collect the data so it could be a cost effective one i'm not sure to what extent this kind of data is available with the plan uh, people's biodiversity register so just for a discussion the people's biodiversity register focused on people's knowledge documenting people's knowledge okay now what we are talking is uh, documenting a scientific uh, this one you know it has to have that uh, the protocol of the you know replicability and all those things has to be there it has to be more importantly authentic i would suggest having a school biodiversity register or a college biodiversity register or teachers biodiversity register would be the most effective thing than the this one so that teachers can go to the local people have the indigenous knowledge and document it Yes. Good evening, all of you. Uh, I am Parvati Jayshankar. Uh, I am working in Jain University. Uh, even though I am working in the Department of Chemistry, uh, the faculty included in this department is from other uh, other areas like biotechnology, microbiology, and biochemistry. Uh, recently, we have submitted a project to DST regarding the uh, detection of water pollution in some of the lakes in Bangalore using bioindicators and uh, give a correlation using GIS. Uh, here, uh, I have one or two concerns. Uh, one thing is, uh, as everybody said, like uh, funding is a problem. and uh, i have another question to dr ramachandra sir uh, because there are so many lakes in bangalore uh, we have planned only for two three lakes but how can we extend this study because as a whole geography when we are actually studying then only as everybody said that we can make an index uh, depending on that so how can we extend this study sir for the whole bangalore lakes well what in fact that's what what i said earlier the same thing i repeat now 
what i have been trying is involving the schools and colleges in bangalore we have covered all 193 lakes in bangalore some of them we have not published so they have done the physical chemical analysis some of the schools were interested colleges were interested in biological thing and they are doing it and apart from that atri is also doing a good job in uh, bangalore lakes so there are many institutions and uh, so now replicating that model in other part of the country we are discussing and because of that only i am here for this program okay, okay. thank you i think uh, the time is uh, up uh, unless uh, one more just a quick pointer to citizen science also i thought is a, has a great potential in uh, you know bringing about biodiversity data uh, many of large portion of which can be quite authentic also uh, like like last year we just started a firefly watch kind of a thing to understand firefly population in india and we realized most firefly species we don't even have a register of what they are but with this uh, simple one page form which we sent out people could register their sighting along with photographs then i contacted them and asked them to actually send me samples which then we identified in the uh, lab so it was a very uh, so maybe such a thing could also be done for river uh, work yeah that's a good suggestion so we uh, had a, a good uh, discussion and um, so many uh, interesting points have come so the uh, takeaway points i would say uh, the curriculum preparation where you know involving the uh, schools and colleges curriculums will be there but we have to visit uh, the gap areas in those uh, curriculums where you know uh, that will be a kind of suggestion for the suggestions from this workshop to the uh, respective uh, policy makers and the second suggestion of uh, this uh, preparing a proposal uh, based on a kind of uh, a micro level study as uh, dr ramachandra suggested that we will be taking it uh, taking it up and we will be uh, uh, taking the help of uh, uh, all of you particularly dr moors james and uh, dr ramachandra so we uh, request your continuous help in uh, uh, realizing our uh, uh, kind of uh, plans and dreams so with this uh, may i stop here uh, any any last word from the panel any 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 last word if there are no words uh, sir dr mors do you want to say any, any, any okay uh, say uh, again, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, again i wish i could be with you thank you for including me in your discussion i look forward to helping in any way that i can okay okay thank you so much uh, dr mors thank you so much uh, dr james and thank you uh, dr uh, ramachandra and thank you all uh, participants we are closing here this session thank you so much yeah thank you all thank you for the session so we are calling it a day